This is Alexander Playtime Williams of PlaytimeCares.com. What's up, world? This is Alexander Playtime Williams of PlaytimeCares.com. This is my Raw recap. This Raw was uh, originally aired June 15, 2015. It was in Cleveland, Ohio. Of course, they embattled in a um, in a, in the NBA playoffs, uh, game six, where they're down 3-2 will happen tomorrow. Uh, well, Tuesday. Um, commentators, JBL, uh, Michael Cole, and uh, Byron Saxon, and he filling in for Booker T, who's doing the tough enough thing. So, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, you know, a great, great wrestler passed, Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. You know, childhood just let me know that, look, man, you get no, you know, he, obviously he called himself the Bill Clinton of wrestlers, in regards to black people. So, you know, a lot of people, a lot of black people actually had an affinity for the Dusty Rose. You know, he came up in there with the soul swag of, of vernacular and whatnot. And, you know, you know, people think that, you know, John Cena was doing it with his basic thugonomics foolishness. But no, Dusty Rose was a real deal cat. And, you know, hey, my condolences to the Rose family. You know, you have two sons wrestling right now in the WWE. So, you know, of course, they did um, a tribute to him. They showed that the tribute they did to him at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which was yesterday, Sunday. And um, then they did a video montage of, you know, pretty much Dusty's career and legacy. Then Seth, Seth Rollins uh, came to the ring. He won his Money in the Bank match. So, of course, he's going to be geeked up about that. They did a recap of the, the match between him and Dean Ambrose. And um, <laughs> he went on, pulled out a nice sheet of paper. He's like, let me thank everybody that's responsible for my success. So, of course, the running gag is he ain't need anybody. So, guess who he thought? Who he, who he thanked all of those times? He thanked himself multiple, multiple times. Great way to make yourself an even better heel. Just, oh, just awesome. Um he told the Cleveland crowd that, you know, pretty much that Johnny Manziel and LeBron James would never bring them a championship. So they need to look at the championship that he was holding in his hand. Oh, man, the crowd. <laughs> it was such a definite boo. It was, man, the crowd was on him after that. Great way to sell yourself. It really was. So Dean Ambrose obviously came out to a lot of cheers and they immediately start fighting. So Seth Rollins runs to the back and people booing him for that, and then Ambrose grabbed the folding chair and sat in the middle of the ring. He's like, look, I want to fight. I want another title shot. I'm staying in the ring until Seth Rollins come out and fight me. So Rollins goes in the back and pretty much talks to Stephanie and Triple H. He's like, look, man, you know, you need to intervene in that. You see what the, what's happening? And Triple H and Steph was like, look, you just said that you ain't need us, that you did everything yourself. So, hey, handle it, homeboy. So uh, they said, matter of fact, we're over here thinking about who it is that we're going to have you face next. So we'll let you know by the end of the night. So he's like, dang. So Dean Ambrose is still sitting in the ring waiting on um, waiting on Seth Rollins to come out. And then who music hit? It's Sheamus, the Money in the Bank contract winner. He comes out and pretty much said, look, let's fight. Hey, what's up? Boom. They start fighting, going back and forth. Um... Dean Ambrose kind of messed up his leg yesterday at the Money in the Bank uh, match. So, um, you know, Sheamus is concentrating on that. And, you know, the crowd was really, really into the match. Great match to start off your show with. Um, Sheamus pretty much left the ring. It was like, you know what? I don't even need this match because they're sitting there just battling each other back and forth. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. He started going towards the back. Randy Orton music hit, crowd erupt. Randy Orton come out, throws that distraction. You know, Sheamus looking at Randy Orton like, what, what you doing out here? Like, he forgot he done brutalized the man a couple of weeks ago. But uh, you know, um, Dean Ambrose ended up getting Sheamus back in the ring off of the distraction, you know, from tagging him from behind, and then uh, got the pin victory on him. <laughs> and, of course, you know, Orton pretty much attacked Sheamus, but Sheamus was able to, you know, get out after taking a, a lot of big hits. He was able to get out with his uh, money in the contract briefcase. And then uh, Rollins, oh, yeah, that match was about an 8 out of 10. It was a really good match to start off the show. 
uh, Rollins was approached by J and J Security in the back, and they pretty much uh, told him, you know, look, you say you ain't needed, but uh, since you think you're all that in a bag of chips, since Jamie, since Joey Mercury pinned you just a couple of days ago, he should get a title shot with you. And, uh, you know, of course, that made Rollins laugh. And then Joey Mercury told him, look, you know, you say you don't need anybody, but right now is where you really do need us because now you're the most vulnerable because you alienated yourself from everybody. So it's not a matter of if you will lose the belt. It's a matter of just when because you don't have any protection. So, you know, Rollins was thinking about that. Then they did another um, video montage for Dusty Rhodes. I believe it was the first time they won the belt, um, the heavyweight title against a Harlem race. Of course, that's a big moment in his career. And then uh, you had R-Truth, fresh off of a victory over King Barrett last night at the Monday the Bank. So he King was up versus King Barrett. Uh, <laughs> Barrett attacked R-Truth while he was trying to get out of a makeshift robe, but he had on a paper crown and a plunger for scepter. Hilarious. Um, but R-Truth still ended up getting a really quick roll-up pin victory on <laughs> Barrett, which Barrett attacked him afterwards, knocked him out, and pretty much told him that he was making a mockery of of him winning the King of the Ring. You know, match by the 7 out of 10 because it was so short. You know, you couldn't really enjoy it. So then the next thing they showed was Machine Gun Kelly, the um, artist. You know, he's back there with some of the WWE superstars and Paige coming to the back and like, well, excuse me, how you doing, Mr. Uh, Kelly? Um, I need to speak divas. I need to speak to y'all at a secret location later on tonight. And um, then they had a Money in the Bank recap of Kevin Owens versus John Cena match. Oh, man. I'm going to go on on record and say this. They should not have allowed Cena to win that match. Do you know how many hashtags of, uh, like, canceled the WWE Network or dropped the WWE Network happened shortly after Cena beat Kevin Owens? People tired of Cena. I mean, the real wrestling people. But, hey, you got to do what you do. Cena sell merchandise. I mean, the dude is, a, I mean, he's a money-making machine, so you got to do what you got to do. Um, so Cena beat Kevin Owens for the money in the bank. Well, you know, uh, Kevin Owens pretty much came in the ring and tell the crowd that, you know, he, that John Cena isn't going to be there because he pretty much hurt John Cena after the match by power bombing him on the side of the ring like he did everybody in the NXT. The crowd just cheered hard. Um, just fight on fight chants and stuff like that. He, Kevin Owens pretty much said that he attacked Cena because Cena disrespected him by trying to validate him by shaking his hand after the match, saying, hey, you belong here and all that type of stuff. So, hey, he, he decided to enter. So, um, he said that he want to fight Cena again. But this time we want to fight him for the U.S. title. People cheered about that. So uh, since Cena wasn't there, Kevin Owens, uh, he decided to do an NXT Open Challenge. Then Dolph Ziggler came out there and, and um, answered the call. But Owens like, look, it's not a title match. Crowd boo, but whatever, whatever. So you got Owens versus Ziggler. Really high energy match. The crowd was into the match the whole time. They really loved that matchup. And there was a lot of near falls between them. They both kept, kept getting two, two and a half, two and three quarter pins on each other throughout the match, which kept the crowd just, you know, just really, really amped up. And uh, at the end, Ziggler ended up falling victim to that pop-up power bomb. Boom. Eight out of ten match. It was really good. So Paige, she gathered all of the divas and essentially say, look, we need to band together and go against the Bella Twins. They've been using this twin match of foolishness for – ages we need to get together and get rid of them but the Bella Twins found out about the meeting so they show up and, and remind all of the Divas ever since I helped Stephanie McMahon I've been a Divas champion do y'all really want to go against Stephanie that's what she pretty much was saying so she gave him a choice who's gonna stand with me everybody left and it is what it is so um you had Paige she said that she was gonna wrestle the Bella Twins in a two-on-one handicap match later on. 
So the next match was uh, Randy Orton versus Kane. It was a decent match. had decent action in it. Um, when Randy Orton actually was about to uh, get the best of Kane, Payback is <laughs> is an MF. So uh, Sheamus music hit, and Randy Orton looking behind him like, dang. So Kane rolled out the ring and said, hey, FYI, this next this match, my match, is a no holds barred match, and it's gonna we're gonna continue the match under no holds barred rules. Sheamus darted into the ring, and, and pretty much they, that was the end of Orton. You know, he bounced off the ropes, and Sheamus hit him with that bro kick to his face. Kane got the pin victory, and um, you know, uh, pretty much that was it. So then they did a recap of. Bray Wyatt interfering with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns was about to win the contract match, the Money in the Bank contract match, but Bray Wyatt decided to push him off of the ladder. So they pretty much did a recap of that actual thing happening. So um, Seth Rollins approaches Kane and tells him that essentially he was the biggest hater of them all when Rollins said that he could beat, um, he could do it by himself, he could beat uh, Ambrose by himself. And pretty much let Kane know that the only reason why he's a hater is because every time that uh, Rollins wins, it reminds Kane that he's a loser. And it reminds him of what he used to be and all of that type of stuff. So um, he told Kane that he hoped that Triple H and Stephanie made him the, you know, the, the challenger for his belt so he could put Kane out of his misery. Not very nice, but hey, it is what it is. So the next thing they showed was a 2007 Hall of Fame induction of Dusty Rhodes, where he got inducted by both his sons, you know, Dustin and uh, Cody. Well, you know, Dustin is gold dust. Um, you know, just showing that. And the next match was The Big Show versus The Miz. We'll ride back on commentary. Uh, they did a Money in the Bank recap of that match, where The Miz actually interfered in the match and caused Ryback to win via disqualification. And, uh, the Miz ran from from the Big Show, but once the Big Show got his hands on him through a little faking the injury thing, once he got his hands on the Miz, oh man, he just was whopping him some good. So then eventually the Big Show picked up the Miz and threw him in the right back while he was on commentary. And right back and the Miz got uh, right back and uh, the Big Show got in each other's face. You know, they talking noise to each other, and the Miz just slowly creeped back in the ring. Referee counted out the Big Show. So the Miz actually ended up winning the match by uh but 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 um count out. So um that match is yeah, about a seven out of ten. It was pretty funny the way it ended. So Roman Reigns pretty much got in the came down, got in the ring, and said the heck with that he wanted to fight Bray Wyatt tonight. Wyatt appeared on the jungle trying and was like, Look, I'm not gonna fight you tonight. We you know, we can fight at uh the next pay per view. Um but uh I fought with you because you took away I, I screwed you out of the the ladder match because you didn't allow me to have my chance in it. You know, when you beat me a couple of weeks ago, you took away my opportunity to actually be in the match, so I had to pay you back. That was essentially his issue with him. So they had a Divas title match recap for the Money in the Bank where the twin magic actually came into effect again. So, of course, the next match is Paige versus the Bella Twins. Really slow match. Expect the results. You know, you got two against one and you know the number games did it <sighs> that's why I think about the the divas division when they don't allow the best talent to actually you know wrestle so you know that was probably a six out of ten match and the Bella twins win it uh, machine gun Kelly performed live for the people in the WWE universe look like uh the Cleveland Knights at least were into it and um Kevin Owens came out clapping, and Machine Gun Kelly was like, thank you, and went to shake his hand. And Kevin Owens was just looking at him. Machine Gun Kelly, man, look, I ain't got no problem with you, man. You shouldn't have a problem with me. Push Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens kicked him in his stomach. Boom. Picked him up. Power bombed him off the stage. I was like, yes, that's great writing. Good job. You know, make him a good heel, man. Just make him a good heel. I love Kevin Owens not. So, um, <laughs> of course, they had to send the ambulance out, or, you know, medical staff to check on them and whatnot. Funny, funny. 
So the next match was the New Day versus Neville in the Primetime Players. Primetime Players won the Tag Team Championship from the New Day in the Money in the Bank uh, pay-per-view. So you had them against the new champ. Once again, Cruiserweight definitely needed. Man, he showed so much talent in his match. It was a really amped up match. The crowd was in, really into it. Long story short, this 8 out of 10 match was won by Neville uh, doing this little red arrow awesome thing off the top rope. You know, the crowd really, really liked that match. So uh, Kane approached Dean Ambrose in the locker room or vice versa, whatever. And uh, Ambrose pretty much told him that, look, Kane, bring you soft. Because, you know, the, the role that you're doing with the authority, it pretty much made you come to work because it's a job. Not because it's what you love to do like me. What is it that, you know, what, what motivates you? What do you love to do? Then, you know, Ambrose just walked away. Kane just sitting there, you know, scratching his head. And then you had a whole bunch of Dusty Rhodes, you know, his sound bites, his, you know, his mic skill, you know, clips. They did a montage of that because, you know, the boy was nice on the mic. So then you had Stephanie and Triple H, you know, they go to the ring. And, you know, Stephanie pretty much apologizes for what Kevin Owens did to Machine Gun Kelly. Then uh, Triple H just pretty much named the list of people that weren't going to be eligible for the uh, to, to face Seth Rollins. Then uh, Rollins essentially comes to the rings, all smiles, and say, look, it don't even matter who you have. It don't even matter who you, who you name because everybody on that roster I can beat. So it don't matter. Just pick whomever. So, hey, Triple H is like, look, I, I seriously want to see if, if you're going to be tested. You know, let's see if you're going to be a person that crumble, if you're going to become a diamond, you know, from that high pressure I'm about to put on you. And Ron was like, hey, whatever. Brock Lesnar music hit. Stadium erupts. Crowd just go crazy. Brock Lesnar step out, crowd go crazy. Paul Heyman step out, crowd just continue the craziness. Brock Lesnar go to the ring, and um, <laughs> the Suplex City chant starts. And Rollins, he essentially just refused to even maintain eye contact with Brock Lesnar every time. Brock went to the, and when he was in c coming close to him in the middle of the ring, he just refused to maintain that eye contact. Then Rollins just backed out the ring. Then he headed straight to the back area, crowd booing the dog snot out of him. But hey. The next pay-per-view is going to be Battlegrounds. They say about five weeks. You already know two of the matches. You're going to have Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. Then you're going to have Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. A pretty decent raw. Pretty decent after a pay-per-view. You know, uh, especially considering how, how so many people actually said how bad the Money in the Bank pay-per-view was. And they wanted to get rid of the WWE Network. So the Raw was pretty decent. Follow me on everything. It's always Playtime Cares. So, hey, hit me up. Comment plus one of them like y'all been doing. Google plus one of them, whatever. Do whatever y'all want. Internet, completely donate, whatever. Interact with me. Playtime cares.